this is the last video of this type business analysis camera industry analysis etc etc I know people are hanging out for the Viltrox and the 14 to 24 and the and the uh, teleconverter and the 70 to 200 reviews yes they're all coming finally my kids are back to school I've slated three days for shooting this week we've also got the photo competition that Mark and I are going to judge this week we got so much to do it's awesome it's exciting it's all coming I promise I'm sorry not only have I had to look after my kids during the school holidays a fair bit of the time, but also I finally moved out of my office after 20 years. It was a massive thing. I've spent the last four days in a row cleaning and packing trucks. Watch this video that I just put up about it. It's not about photography, but it is about business and it is about stability and it is about legacy and something that I think is important for everybody to think about when they start any business is what this video is about. So let's talk about Tom. Tom, firstly, if you're watching this video, I would like to say thank you. Uh, you and I, we are one of the not so many who still believe in Nikon and can see that there's a, <laughs> there's a great future ahead there. So thank you, uh, thank you for being there. Hopefully one day we meet. Let's talk about what Tom, and if you're watching Tom, you, yes you, has said about what is coming up. Tom seems to have some inside connections. Me, I'm a very unconnected person. I do not have any inside connections, rumors, or any information about what Nikon is doing next. My information is based on history, what we've seen in the past, and data, any data that is collected from the various numerous data that is available out there in the world. Plus we can have fairly strong expectations on historical behavior. And we can have further expectations based on patent releases, sensors available, and also based on what the competition are doing. So there's a lot that I can pull together, but Tom, by the sounds of it, actually has inside information. Now, what Tom is telling us in his article, which I will link below, is that there is most definitely a Z8 or a Z9 coming soon. Now, before we talk about the coming soon part, what if the Z8 slash Z9 is actually the Z1? Then we would have the A1, the R1, and the Z1. That'd be kind of unifying, wouldn't it? And then we'd all know exactly, finally, what we're looking at. I think it'd be cool, because the naming schemes of all camera companies might start to unify. Is that possible? Anyway, just a crazy thought. So coming soon. So Tom has said coming soon he believes might be late spring. Now that's for people who live in the Northern Hemisphere. Us that live in the Southern Hemisphere, spring is six to nine months away. But for those that live in the Northern Hemisphere, spring is next. Spring is going to start in March and end in May. So late spring might mean late April or sometime in May. Now, this timing makes a lot of sense because Nikon's financial year, this bad year that they've had, where there's a 720 US million dollar loss. Let's just segue slightly off to one side. Nikon have just come out and refreshed that number by saying the loss is going to be near 100 million dollars less than they thought. Isn't that fantastic? That's a lot of sales that they've had that they maybe thought they weren't gonna have. Now this brings their uh, loss to closer to 600 million, just above 600 million, and 600 million on around 5 billion. Well, 
that's nearing 10%, only a 10% loss on breaking even. This is fine, this is normal, I don't have a problem with it. When I say normal, I don't mean normal for all the time. I mean normal based on when you have a bad year. It's not, that's not that bad a year, 10% down, roughly. So this will mean this flagship expensive camera will be in the new financial year, of course, helping drive Nikon back to profit as they have suggested they will be in this financial year that's about to begin. So from a financial timing perspective, it makes sense. From an Olympics perspective, if it happens, it makes sense. From uh, the market screaming for it, it makes sense, sooner rather than later. So this is great. And as Tom said, he's getting this from multiple sources and he can't imagine that all of them are pulling his leg. So it may well seem that we are going to have this first version of a flagship camera as soon as the next two to three months. That is super exciting. I would also think from this that if it's that close, we will actually start to hear and see real data appearing about it in the next perhaps two to four weeks. Maybe if we're super lucky, Nikon will actually tease it early like they did with the Z62 and the Z72. That is possible. That would be exciting. Now, Tom also says, don't expect this camera to be more than the A1, but it'll be up, as I've already said, as I already thought, it'll be up in that stratosphere somewhere, R5, A1, somewhere around there. But it will have some attributes, at least one, that will be superior over the A1. Now, that could be anything. Will it be a vertical, built-in vertical grip? I find it weird that their $6,500 camera the a1 doesn't have a built-in vertical grip but then conversely I find it actually kind of smart that you can have this absolute flagship camera you can use it in a small form factor and then if you want to add and make it more modular if you want to add a vertical grip you can add a vertical grip so I kind of like the idea maybe the vertical grip should come for free in the box and you can add it sub and subtract it as you see fit because it's such an expensive camera maybe that should be the case so is that what Nikon will do they'll give us a fully hardcore body when quite frankly I uh, quite frankly I've been happy working with the Z6 and the Z7 in the non vertical grip uh, version and I've been happy working in in it with the vertical grip so I quite like again the modularity of it rather than this assumption that every pro wants a vertical grip because we don't necessarily depends what we're doing use case more modular makes sense not going to change anything now this camera is probably being built as we speak uh, and the first thousand prototypes are probably already you know close to finish if the date's only two or three months away the other thing interesting about the a1 just as a sidestep but this is very relevant to nikon there's been so many complaints about Nikon's the way the screen flips on the Z6 and the Z7s and somebody told me that the A1 flips the same way it's not a flip around screen so they're they're clearly saying that this six and a half thousand US dollar absolute monster camera is not for vlogging nobody wants to vlog in 8k no one wants that that much detail as close as we are right now nobody wants that but it also says that if you want a pro camera this is the type of flipping screen that you want so that's, that's fantastic for Nikon that they're standing by their guns, that these are cameras designed for a user to be behind using them. They're not designed for vlogging. That's not the focus of these devices. Even so, some people would like to use them that way. I'm using it that way right now without a screen. I can't see myself and I can't constantly look at myself. I have to say, my advice to you, you want a little bit of advice. If you've got a flippy screen and you want to vlog, frame your shot close the screen you don't have to check yourself every four or five seconds you don't isn't it interesting the absolute highest in alpha camera does not have a flip around screen if that's true please let me know i will check this before this goes live Back to Tom Hogan, 
So next couple of months we might have a camera. Makes sense, it's time for it. Makes sense in Nikon's financial year. It makes sense after the A1 and the R5 has dropped. It makes sense because there's so much pent up Nikon demand for it. And I unquestionably believe that Nikon need to do this in the next six months. They just, they just need to. Or there's some people that are gonna just not cope and blow a gasket. I'm not one of them, I'm very happy with the cameras I have to date, but from a marketing perspective alone, yep, it needs to happen. Here we are with some pretty strong data. I look forward to seeing rumors or official specs in the next two to four weeks. I think it needs to happen that fast. The A1 will have faded in everybody's minds. Everything fades so quickly. Do you remember the A7S III? Oh, I can hardly remember it. Or the R5, I hardly remember it. So the Z8, Z9, Z1, whatever it's gonna be, I think we're gonna know about it really, really soon. Super exciting times. And I'd like to thank Tom for sharing his very level-headed views. We are on a pretty similar page, except I don't have access to any inside info. But hey, a lot of it's kind of just there to be read in the tea leaves anyway. All right, everybody. Well, it's so good to see you. Please let me know your thoughts on Tom Hogan's article, which, as I said, link, link down below. Do you think it's uh, ringing true to you that this is going to be what might happen? Let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time here, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see you again. So please subscribe. That'd be awesome. Uh, please share this video. It helps us. Uh, it helps us all get smarter. But um, please like. That, that's super critical. And I, and I just love you to comment, even if you just say hi. All right. Bye.